Busy morning. It's good. You guys enjoying the morning so far? Oh yeah, it's great. Cool. All right, I'm gonna take you through and talk about what's new. Uh, we'll go through. I'll do a quick little demo on resist spray. There'll be a lot of samples that you can do feel a vision with. Yeah. So I encourage you to hold it up in front of your camera and be like, oh yeah, because we're gonna talk about what's new. There's some great new stuff in distress. First thing up, of course, are 12 new colors of distress oxide, and here they are. And this makes me really happy because. Uh, you know, distress oxides have just become so popular that when I did Facebook Live, people didn't even care about the colors. They were just like, oh, new inks, great, when are they shipping? I'm like, well, no, let me tell you what the colors are. Like, no, we just want more colors. We don't care what they are. And that's really awesome to have uh, that kind of support for a product because oxides have been a really great new medium, something fun for people to work with. But there is a method to how I release the colors, so I'll just quickly go through them. So Tattered Rose, that is the new pink, and of course you can see the existing colors between Worn Lipstick, uh, Picked Raspberry, Band and Coral. Having something really light and pale is really going to be a great introduction to Oxide. Then of course in our reds, we've had you know Fired Brick and Candied Apple, but look at Aged Mahogany. That dark, deep red is very, very cool for uh, a lot of mixed media backgrounds. Then we have Carved Pumpkin, that really true, vibrant orange. Very different than Wild Honey or Spice Marmalade. Then when we get into yellows, we've got Squeeze Lemonade, that really clean, bright yellow. Because, you know, we had fossilized amber, that's good, or wild honey, but every single time I just look at that palette, and even though we will have all 60 by the end of the year, it's how they're introduced so you know, okay, I can justify adding that to my collection because I don't have the color already. Now, I definitely wanted to release Bundled Sage because uh, there was almost a whole revolt group that I didn't do Bundled Sage in crayon until the end. So now in Oxide, I'm like, it's coming out in the third release. It's a great green because it has that uh, sagey color that makes for great patina backgrounds. Uh, I love how it oxidizes with that chalky look. Then in the greens, we have Evergreen Bow, which is a great kind of bluish green. Again, great for turquoise or patina effects. Then one of my favorite greens, Forest Moss, really dark green, look at how that oxidizes. Those darker colors oxidize really, really strong. And this, of course, is a great complement to Age Mahogany. You'll see in the colors that there's some light colors and some deep colors in the release. Then in the blues and turquoise, because we've had a lot in the oxide, but you can see here that we had Mermaid Lagoon, we had Broken China, so, I'm sorry, we had Peacock Feathers. So doing Mermaid Lagoon is really key because now instead of that teal color, we have that really bold turquoise color of Mermaid Lagoon. And then of course one of my faves, Blueprint Sketch, because it could be, yeah, really this ultraviolet or this navy blue. I just love the way that it looks. And then Shaded Lilac, nice purple from Seedless Preserves and Wilted Violet, just creates that soft look. Then of course we have to get into uh, some of the browns. Now we've had Frayed Burlap, I will have to say favorite oxide of all time, just because of how it oxidizes. I don't know what makes that happen. But Gathered Twigs, Really, really a nice woodsy brown because Vintage Photo, Walnut Stain, obviously a much redder and greener brown. So this is good for a lot of wood grain. You know, we did wood grain cardstock or the wood grain folder from Sizzix, so I wanted to do that. And then, still the favorite, Hickory Smoke because, I know, see? Every time I see it, everyone's like, mmm, like it's gray. Yes. Um, but it has that great kind of stone concrete look to that hickory smoke. I know, it's just, it's good. <laughs> so those are uh, the new colors, I know. Like gray is it, it just, I think it calms everyone, it goes with everything. So those are the 12 new colors, but we also introduced some cool new tools with Distress. One is Distress Resist Spray. Now this is a sprayable resist. You can spray it onto paper, onto glass, onto metal, onto plastic, onto fabric, wood, anything you spray it on, it will resist anything you spray it on. So keep that in mind. And I'll talk a little bit about when you work with it. And it actually creates a textured resist. And it could be something that's very, very fine and faint, even these little misty patterns, to something really splattery and mixed media, right? Depending on how you spray it, wherever it goes, it's going to act as that great resist on your backgrounds, okay? It goes on white, has kind of the consistency of milk, but then it dries clear. Now, because it goes on with a texture, and that's why I said like texture TV, because it has almost like a little uh, orange peel effect. It's not gritty at all, but you can definitely feel some bumps, some texture. It stays wet on the surface long enough that we can also emboss with it. And this has been really, really popular uh, that a lot of people, because in our mixed media world, right, embossing powders are everything, we love to use them. So having a new way to use them, having a different way, instead of using a Versa marker, an embossing dabber, or uh, any glues that we can spray, we create ridiculous textures with embossing powders because you can see however I spray it is exactly where every little granule of enamel goes. 
So I can do this in a journal, I can do it on a wood frame, I can do it on a glass votive, I can spray it, and I can pour embossing powder over that. And I just like the effect because you think for resist, like take a look at that through a stencil. See those tiny little speckles, but then when the light hits it, you can see that little bit of shine. That's almost like embossing as a resist, but when we emboss, it's always solid, right? Unless our stamp is textured, it's gonna be solid. This, when I spray it through, you still get all those little speckles and you would think, well, it's liquid, so certainly it would just fill in. No, this is a fast drying resist. So when we use it, we work in a box. Not on your craft sheet. No, it'll stick to a non-stick craft sheet. Yeah, you'll be scraping that off, you won't be happy. It will stick to anything it goes on. So work in a box with just some paper. This way it's got some walls so you don't have to worry about that traveling anywhere. And we're just gonna do a couple of backgrounds real quick. And all I need to do is take this, I'm just gonna spray it on. If I wanna create those bigger sprays, I can just slowly squeeze this and get it to almost dribble. And you'll see here, this one has a mist. This one has kind of those splattery dribbles. But the key to this when you're done is you need to simply take a baby wipe and just wipe off the nozzle, okay? You don't have to unscrew this. You don't have to flush it out. You don't have to do anything. As long as you wipe that nozzle off, it won't clog on you. You're good to go. Now, drying time on this. It's usually under a minute when you miss it on there. It's going to dry very quick. Something a little bit heavier than this, a little over a minute, maybe you could use a heat tool on it. You can use a heat tool to dry it. It won't blister it, it won't do any of that. But while these are drying, I'll talk about embossing. Because Wendy is dying to emboss. Right? Again. Yes, Wendy's like, I will emboss for you, yes. So if I'm going to emboss, I'll work with a stencil. Now, if you're going to use a stencil, because you can use your stencils, right? You have to have a few things ready. Whatever powder you're going to use, whatever embossing powder, any embossing powder you want, embossing glitter, it doesn't matter. Ready, open. Whatever surface you're going to pour it on. In other words, once we start spraying, you don't have time to look for anything. And then you're going to have a container of water, just regular water, all right? Because what I need to do is once I put this on, I'll use this cleaner stencil. Okay. I need to spray, cover with powder, put it in, and still wipe off the nozzle. Here we go. Yeah. It's, it's not as freaky as you think it actually works. So I've got my stencil in the box. Can you guys see it? Cool. Now I'm just going to go in. I'm just going to miss that. Wipe off the nozzle. Pick up the stencil. Put it in water. Because it's water-based, you can see that white little ring. Pick up my tag. Pick up my powder. And pour it over the top. I feel like there should have been a little Aww. clock ticking down how many seconds. It could have happened, yeah. So then I've got that great thing. And you can see that how I sprayed, I don't know if you paid attention, but I sprayed really heavy here, and then I just kind of let it mist out. So even my embossing powder replicates that. That's what's so cool about this. It's not getting that big solid mass every time. And whether I wanted to put this on the cover of a journal or a wood picture frame or anything that I want, I can spray this on. Just know that when you're embossing, you want to make sure that everything's good. Because if you have to look for something, it's just that the resist is already dry. It's not going to damage anything. If you forget to put your stencil in the water, well, you have a textured stencil. <laughs> it's still going to work because the openings are still open, but it'll be, it'll be bumpy for a while. All right. So, Wendy will emboss that because you can tell she just wants to. And I'll talk about these guys. So these you can see still shiny. So the question is, how do you know if it's dry? Well, if you just touch it and it's not wet, it's dry because it looks the same. It looks shiny. It looks like it would be wet, but it isn't. So when I add my medium, I can add my inks with a blending tool. Um, I like to use a lot of ink sprays. I can use a watered down acrylic. Anything fluid is going to uh, easily resist off of this surface. So I'm just gonna take some ink sprays and I always wipe my ink sprays no matter. So wiping off the resist spray was nothing new to me. It's just a habit I always have because anything with a sprayer, right? You just get in the habit of cleaning off that spray nozzle. It's just good. All right, I'll add a little bit of water to this. Kind of move that color around. Perfect. Get rid of this. And you'll see that on the heavier things, like you can see those bigger areas, it will resist on contact, right? You'll be able to spray it and see, oh, it's already resisting. But those little sprays, especially if you do these little light backgrounds, these faint, you'll kind of freak out when you first ink it because you think, oh, it didn't work. I didn't have enough. No, it, it did work. So you'll see that as I dry this, and you can already see right now as it's drying, more and more of that resist is starting to appear, right? When he's like, I'm trying. See, she's like, look, oh, time's up. Like, that should have been a timer. It's like beating the clock, right? <laughs> Thanks, Wendy. 
But you can see as it's drying, see how more and more of that resist is starting to show up? And I like the fact that it's a resist spray. So now when I dry my ink background, I don't have to worry about this getting sticky again. It's already dry. It's not going to get sticky. It's not going to do anything like that. And this is just going to allow me to create that cool background. That cool, resisted, textury background. And take a look at our embossing. Now, of course, I can ink that too, but are you kidding? Just that is awesome. Yeah. And do this over pattern paper, right? So forget the whole ink world. Shocking, I know. But <laughs> even if you forget the whole inking mixed media thing and you have beautiful pattern paper and you could take a stencil like that and do that and have an uh, anniversary card, a wedding card, anything like that, show it's a great way to glam it up. It's very cool. Show time. 10 minutes to showtime. We've been doing showtime for hours. Yeah. <laughs> it's great. I love this. All right, so we'll talk about another tool and that is the Distress uh, Blending Brush. This is a great addition because it's another tool, another way that we can use our Distress ink. Of course, Distress, uh, we're a fan of mini blending tool, right? We went from that rectangle to the mini one, and this has been really great because I think people feel they have a lot more control when it comes to inking because I can take that tool and do my circular motion. But obviously in mixed media, stencils are becoming more and more popular, right? We're using it with texture paste and grip paste, but when we wanna use it with ink, we have a couple of challenges. First off with the blending tool, to go into a stencil, I have to pounce, right? And if I pounce a blending tool, we know that we get the circle. And then you think, okay, well, I'll just kind of try to move in a circular motion. Well, that could work, but depending on your stencil, you may have all these little pieces that are going to catch onto that blending foam. And that's why I wanted to do a brush. And I know that there are a million brushes already. There are a million and one stencil brushes, all different kinds, so I thought, well, how can I do something a little bit different? So, after taking a little trip to Sephora with my friend and looking at a <laughs> wall of brushes, I'm like, that's kind of a cool design. So I loved the concept of this kind of, it's not really a retractable brush because this is the brush itself. It is a natural fiber brush that you can use with any kind of ink, your oxides, your distress, your archival inks. And it's an easy way that I can ink through stencils. So maybe I'm going to take some ink, take my brush, and I can go right into my stencil and I can go in a circular motion I can pick up color, I can pounce, and I'm never going to have any crazy, harsh inking lines, which is good, okay? But what's nice is I also have the ability to focus my color. So for example, on this one, this is gonna give me a really nice soft blend. See that? Really easy. But let's say I wanted to add some accent, some other detail. Now, if I'm going into another blue, I would just use this. If I wanted to uh, change, I can wipe this off on a baby wipe, it would clean up, but I like to have a dedicated blending brush. Now, seven of them fit in the mini distress tin, by design. Um, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple, and brown. But when you work with this, if you wanted to add some different colors, so here we're gonna go into a little bit of purple. If I don't wanna ink the whole area, this gives me the ability to slide this up, okay? Because these brushes, the way they work is they are designed to flare out. That's why I did these large bristles, so I can ink a large area. But if I wanna ink a small area, I simply slide this channel up, and that's going to make all of my bristles compact, and that's what's going to allow me to go in and really focus my color onto a smaller area. And really just concentrate that color, okay? And when you're finished with the brush, you simply slide this all the way up to the top, covers the bristles. There's bumps all the way around. That bump is gonna hold that lid. That bump is going to hold it closed. And then you're done. So it is nice that we have the ability to create these great blends, but maybe you're not stenciling, right? They're not called stencil brushes. They're blending brushes. So if you wanted to, you can use them for blending. There are people that still just have that fear of blending. And I found more and more with people that do planners, right? They don't wanna put ink in their planners because you could ruin the entire thing, right? You're a planner person? I'm not a planner person, but I know people that are, and I love that because it just means a whole different crowd using our mediums. But if you have that fear of ink, you can use your blending brush and you don't have to worry about starting off the edge, holding the tool any special way because we can add ink and it's never going to create those crazy harsh lines. And if we wanted to create that blend, Right? You know when we use the blending tool, how it goes from dark to light, we can still ink this up, slide this forward to get those bristles a little bit more compact, and that's where we can focus that darker color in the corner. And then you can simply extend that brush and blend it out. Really easy. So that fear of inking and blending, it's history. We've got the blending brush. So those are the blending brushes. Now, 
We'll quickly just go through and talk about some of the new stuff uh, in the world of alcohol ink. There's just some uh, new releases. We have six new colors and a new metallic mixative in alcohol inks. We have a new brown, which is sepia. They're marked with a star. Aquamarine is a new turquoise. Pistachio is a new green. We've got coral, that's that new corally color. I love that. This one, always more surprising, dandelion. We have a yellow in alcohol ink, who knew? Uh, crimson, which is a deep red, which is great. And then we have a storage tin that holds 30 alcohol inks. It will also hold your enamel accents or your stickles. And what's cool is that there's actually a plastic insert in here that even if you take out colors, you don't have to worry about your bottles falling, right? Because that's pretty annoying, where you take out bottles and then everything falls in and you're like, yeah, forget it. So that is why we designed the tin oh, kind of upside down. You can also visibly see all the labels, so you don't have to worry about marking the tops of any of the bottles. And then lastly, Ranger just took some of our uh, existing tools and branded them in the alcohol ink line to kind of uh, help give everyone permission of what can work with what. So we have, um, oh, thanks, thanks, Wendy. We have the alcohol ink palette, which is just like the Distress palette, but now it's branded with alcohol inks because you can use these in. And I do encourage you guys, Sharon Harris will be here today demoing. Come by and watch her paint. It will blow your mind what she can do with alcohol ink, this palette, and a brush. I'm telling you what, it's mind-boggling. And she's, oh, she's a who? She's so funny. But that's why we did alcohol ink brushes. It's just, again, giving permission for people to use that brush for alcohol ink so they don't have to worry about their brushes getting uh, dissolved or destroyed or anything like that. And then, of course, alcohol ink tool. We had so many requests because they love the mini <coughs> blending tool. What about little round felts? So now we have the replacement felts for the round blending tool and the little alcohol ink for blending tool. And Wendy reminded me, we do have two mixatives. It's good to save the best for last anyway. Because <laughs> um, these have been really popular. We have gunmetal and rose gold mixative. So rose gold, I don't know if, it, are you guys catching the light? Yeah, Am I doing it? Yeah, it's so it? hard to see because it keeps shining. Am I doing it? Yeah. There we go. So rose gold is gonna be kind of that beautiful pink color, and then gunmetal is that really grungy, gritty, gray color. So that is it. Some really exciting new things from Ranger coming your way. Yeah, it's good. Thanks, you guys. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe to Scrap Time videos here on YouTube so you'll be the first to see all our videos from Creativation. And follow us on Instagram at Scrap Time Photos to see photos straight off the show floor.